I see in your eyes the same fear that would take the heart of me. A day may come when the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day. An hour of wolves and shattered shields when the age of men comes crashing down. But it is not this day. This day we fight. By all that you hold dear on this good earth, I bid you stand, men of the West! This day we fight. By all that you hold dear on this good earth, I bid you stand. What are we standing up against, you ask? Well, we are making a stand against warlocks. How do we do that, you ask? Well, we do it by doing one or two things. Either you tax the warlock, you could play Tax Paladin or a range of other tax-based decks, or you pretend warlocks don't exist. We kind of ignore them. In other words, you just continue playing the decks that you enjoy playing. And if you face a warlock, you simply concede and move on. Don't waste your time. So, the wise words from Aragorn have led us to this point. Uh, that clip from Lord of the Rings Return of the King got me thinking. You see, Boltzmann sent me a deck last Sunday. It was a Sunday present from Boltzmann. In fact, it's the deck that you can see on your screen right now. A fun deck where we can just pretend warlocks don't exist. That's us taking our stand, like Aragorn said. If we see a warlock, we concede, we move on. So I looked at this deck, I saw dragons. I love dragons. And Boltzmann wants to include my favourite card in all of Hearthstone, other than the Shadowock. Uh, it's Ysera Unleashed, but it was too slow which is unfortunate. He also wanted to include Scale Rider, which was also too slow. But there is some great interactions in this deck. You have Frizz, Bran, Embiggen, which is your dream value hand. You have dragons in this deck that can't be targeted by spells and hero powers, which is quite useful, to say the least. You build up a board of dragons, ramp up at the same time, go face, win the game. That's the strategy. If you see a warlock, do what I do, concede, and simply move on. Do not waste your time, is what I would advise personally if playing a deck like this. Oh look, it's a hunter. Finally a deck that's not a warlock. However, this hunter is a Cthulhu hunter. And we're about to get bullied. And I can't believe that this deck has been allowed to exist in this way for as long as it has, taking into account that bug. I know Blizzard will fix it, but I faced three of those hunters within like a half an hour period, which was really, really annoying. So yes, concede against Warlocks, concede against Cthulhu Hunters is maybe my advice to you. But anyway, let's have a look at a proper game here, and we're going up against a mage. So, the Peasant for turn one seems okay. I mean, they'll hear a parrot down. We lose it. We don't get the value from it. But that is two mana spent on a hero power when they could have spent that two mana doing something perhaps more productive. So I'll take that. Okay, initiative back to us. There is Embiggen. And there's Ramp. Now we could play uh, Lightning Bloom and the coin. We could put out the Fairy Dragon. But I'm happy to take this steady. 
I feel like I have time with this game because they they didn't play a quest, right? This is not Questline Mage. So I, I feel like I have more time to take this steady. But do note, we have a dragon on board that cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers. It's pretty useful. Particularly against a spell heavy class like Mage. Now we have two dragons on board that can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Pretty awesome. And you'll have to excuse the quality of the footage here, recorded on my iPad. Another secret in play. So now we have three dragons aboard that can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Hmm. And double ice barrier suggests that they are stalling for time. They are gathering resources. Look at the animation effects on these three dragons. There. It really is quite mesmerizing staring at these dragons. Frost Nova. Hmm. This brings back memories of what? Freeze Mage? Exodia Mage? What is it? So we're just gonna load up the board here. Let us see if this peasant gets us any value next turn. Hmm, another secret. So this secret has to be Ice Block, right? I see a vision in the place. Oh, goodness gracious me. Don't even think about it. Just go face. Actually, maybe I should have thought about the order of attack. Uh, to, to try and get them to one is, of course, the strategy. Alright, we put them to one. That's all that matters. It's turn eight, by the way. So can they stall out this game... For much longer. They'd have to freeze the board and freeze my face. Oh, research project. Another ice block? Okay, that should be it. My hand is too oh, cold. there goes the frosted over. Beautiful. Game number two. Okay, it's Agro Priest. So, down comes the peasant. Once again, we're expecting the opponent to utilize the hero power to kill it. Yep, as expected. However, 
this minion that we're going to put down. It can't be targeted. And the construction and design of this deck in this meta is pretty damn awesome. Having these dragons that cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers is great. It really is. It really messes with the opponent. This fairy dragon potentially is going to get value trades on two minions. It killed the 1-1, one, one, it's still alive, and it's going to kill the 3-2. That's pretty good. All the while, the priest could not target that fairy dragon with the hero power. Oh, that's unfortunate. Spirit Lash, sure. Ooh, watch post. This is not a normal aggro priest. Interesting. But once again, the dragon cannot be targeted. Count sharp blessings, mates. I've got exotic wares. This is and funnel cake. Bizarre. This is not what I'm used to facing on wild mode with uh, aggro priest. Well, that's an eight nine on the board. Those stats are pretty awesome. For turn 5, it's not bad at all. I was okay with that. Um, they had to trade everything in. That's fine. And that's a 9-9. Beefy stats. Interesting. And no further follow up. I don't see how they deal with the nine nine. I see. Oh, wow, look there. So this priest deck is definitely different. My suspicion at this point is that we're more than likely dealing with a Reno priest. Looking at the cards that were played on those earlier turns, those were not cards that you see commonly in Agro Priest. Uh, that plays duplicates. And there he is! There's Reno Jackson. Gonna be rich. That's not gonna save the priest, though. It's not gonna be enough to save them. We've got so much damage on the board. And that's not lethal with Alex Straza. Oh, goodness. Well, that's annoying. Well, it's not annoying. They can't do much, but Mind Render is a card I find frustrating to play against. Thankfully here, it did nothing. Okay. Well, let's head into our next game. Now on this game, I'm actually back on my PC, so we're actually looking at this game with a full deck tracker on the right hand side, so you can keep track of the cards that I'm playing, and you can see what the opponent is playing uh, via the left hand side of your screen. Peasant value. You love to see it. My earlier games... The peasant didn't do a huge amount. 
well, he got killed on the second turn, on turn two. So we didn't get the card draw value, but here, our peasant is alive. And the amalgam there, hopefully, will protect the peasant from the hero power. Yep. Hero power can't attack. No, hero power and pass. You love to see it. Meanwhile, here come the cards. I love the voice lines of the peasant. Blizzard's artwork, uh, I think with this last expansion, has been excellent. Uh, the sound effects, the animations, the voice lines have been great too. It's just a shame about the meta itself. About the design of Warlock. Just a real shame. But... That's just my opinion. I know there are a lot of people out there who enjoy playing Warlock, I'm sure. So if you enjoy playing it, that's great. But for some of us, clearly, this is not a great meta. But when you can face, you know, a druid, a questline druid, to me, questline druid is fair and honest. It really is. How do I know it's fair and honest? I know because the deck that I'm playing here is competing with it. And I feel like I stand a chance of winning this game as we progress. Whereas if this was Warlock, and it was their turn four, they'd actually be near quest line completion at this point. And then I'd just know I'd be dead. So, the fact that we are able to stand a chance against Druid, or to feel like we stand a chance at this point, I think makes us quite a fun experience. So, low Theb on 5 hopefully blocks out any spell-based plays and hopefully slows the druid down, lets me keep this board. It's not the biggest board in the world, a 2-2, two -two, a 3-2, three -two, a 2-1, two but hopefully a low Theb here lets me keep these minis alive. That's a pounce for 5, which went face. Interesting. But my goodness, this peasant is doing serious work. Strength in numbers, I'm looking for an opportunity to play it. But I also want to empty cards out of my hand because this peasant, if we're not careful, will overdraw us at some point. Um, Alright, this should be it. This should be it. They're down to seven. So I guess ideally we want to play two cards a turn, right? To keep up with the peasants so we don't overdraw. This is turn six. Pretty impressive with this board. Ooh, open summons. And these spell stones with the Oaken Summons reminding me of Jade Druid. Oh, I really want to play Jade Druid again. With Ysera Unleashed. And Yog. No, make that double Yog. I really want to play it again. Oh dear. Memories of the past. The good times, right? The good times of the past. Living Roots deals with the 4-1. Beyond that, there's no lethal here. We must stop this corruption. At least I don't think there was a lethal here. Okay. So now we win the game, right? Turn 7 with this board. No? They're still going to hang in there? 
Oh, they killed our peasant. Seven turns of value we got from it. Okay, it's over. Oh, that was a fun game. We were able to win. And we are traversing Diamond 4. Amazing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Boltzmann's Dragon Druid. What an amazing deck. Uh, look, I was able to win games with this deck. Granted, I conceded against Warlocks. And some of our opponents weren't playing top tier meta decks. But we were still able to win. And, uh, you know, that to me is important. I had fun. I played my dragons. I enjoyed myself. What more can I ask for? Now, if you look at the deck list, you may be thinking, what was my MVP card of the deck? Well, you've got a list of impressive dragons. Yeah, there's Alex Straza, Lifebinder, who can heal you or deal damage. You've got Evasive Worm, that's got the Rush effect with the Divide Shield. Emerald Explorer is a taunt that can get you a dragon too. Big ol' Whelp is card draw. Uh, Evasive Feywing can't be targeted by spells or hero powers, so you may be looking at this list of impressive dragons. And you may be thinking, surely one of those is the MVP card of the deck, or maybe Frizz for, you know, the battle cry, particularly when comboed with Bran. Or maybe Lotheb with its battle cry. Maybe one of those is the MVP card of the deck. Actually, for me, the MVP card of this deck has been the Peasant. As you saw in that earlier game, it sat there for seven turns and it drew me cards. Um, the card draw is not to be underestimated. It helps a big deal. Uh, Lurtheb in particular though would be a runner-up for me as the MVP card. In terms of just blocking out spell-based classes and in Wild at the moment, I think that is an absolute must. And don't underestimate Alex Straza as a finisher doing that burst damage that perhaps they don't see coming. Now one thing to note with this deck is that it is an off-meta deck. 3,520 dust it isn't too expensive, but if you do craft this deck, if you do um, decide to play this deck on the ladder, please be absolutely aware it's an off meta deck. You are likely to struggle against meta decks. Um, playing this deck, I have beat two aggro priests. One of the games you saw in the video, it was a Reno Aggro Priest. I didn't even know that kind of deck existed. Um, but the other game that you didn't see, which I played, I think, on my tablet, my iPad, uh, I did beat a normal Aggro Priest. And I got really lucky. I, I ramped up, got some minions on board they couldn't target. I actually hit face and won, just barely. But I got really, really lucky. Uh, I think, in theory, Aggro Priest shouldn't be a good matchup for this deck. But somehow I lucked out on it. I don't know how. But a big thank you to Boltzmann. I, I didn't expect a huge amount from this deck um, when I started playing it. I knew I was going to have fun because I absolutely love dragons, but I didn't know how well this deck would perform on the ladder. I had low expectations in terms of winning games. But I just got lucky, I think, in terms of uh, playing a number of opponents who weren't playing top tier decks and that allowed me to have fun and whenever I saw a warlock I conceded. That strategy worked well for me. Apologies for the quality of the footage in this video. I was recording games on my iPad, I was recording games on my phone. It was only the final game that you saw that came from my PC so please excuse uh, the quality of the, the video footage in some of those games. So thank you very much for joining me everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, listen to Aragorn from the start of the video, take a stand against Warlock and just enjoy yourself, continue to have fun whilst playing the game. I will see you all again very soon for more Wild Mode fun, but until next time, please stay safe, please look after yourselves and as always, please be good to one another.